computer. All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, Modelo Time Weekly Recap. This is week, I don't know, some week, week something. I don't know. Five. Do you know, Stephen? Five? Week five. Going into week week five weekly recap. Yeah. Um, we are joined by Kiss and Cousins team owner, Stephen Caldwell, as you can all see. Um, you're not blind, so he's here. Um, before we get started, Stephen, I need to ask this. Kiss and Cousins. Um, that's, that seems more like an Arkansas name than a Kansas name. I'm. Yeah. So I <laughs> admire people who have clever team names, not people because they're cousins. I admire people who have <laughs> uh, clever team names. And so uh, that was the best I could do with what I have. You guys have seen my team. There's nobody noteworthy on the team. Um, I have been working behind the scenes right now to try and put together uh, a trade to get uh, Carson Wentz and then pick up James Prochet off of the waiver wire so I can rename my team WAP, Wentz, and Prochet. Uh, but I haven't been able to get that all completed yet. So we'll, we'll see if that actually happens. That, that's a fantastic team name. Um, I don't know if it's worth two roster Thanks. spots going Thanks. to those two guys but you never know i guess i, I don't know you know when <laughs> when when winning is not an option you gotta <laughs> give to the league what you can you're right and you're what right. i can offer at this point is a hilarious team name so that's fair you don't even have kirk cousins on your team do you hell yeah oh okay why did I think yeah. you didn't? I thought you traded him or something. <laughs> no, I just named my team Kissing Cousins for no reason. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I thought like you, I thought you had him at one point, but I thought you traded him and just kept the name. I was like, oh, that, hey, that's fine with me. Like, whatever. No, no. It's the one reason I'd love I like to rid never... myself of that name. But at this, point, <laughs> at this point, I have no choice. Uh, it's it's the probably the only reason I will possibly never trade Cortland Sutton because Sutton on TDs, you know, it's just, I just love it so much. Hell of a name. And I, there's no other Suttons out there. Hell of a name. That I could just add to my roster. So, all right, enough about team right. name talk, I guess. Um, welcome to week five <laughs> weekly recap where we only talk about team names. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and... <laughs> jump into the actual recap uh first game we'll talk about is modelo's most wanted uh getting the getting the dub against the worst is slightly better uh modelo's most wanted was able to hold off a four touchdown performance from travis kelsey on monday night to walk away victorious in this one led by running back one on the week austin neckler i for a, a while i thought that trev was gonna lose because travis kelsey I really thought it was going to happen yeah. and I really wanted and it to happen. Not going to lie. Here's the, here's the absolute crazy shit about that though. Travis Kelsey had a four touchdown performance and only put up 26 points. That's, That's absurd. Yards. But I mean, 25, <laughs> 25 yards, right? Yeah. Um, I guess when you just get every goal line reception, that's what happens. But you know, you add, it, it could have been much bigger. Could have been much, much oh, yeah. bigger. Like, usually he's flirting with 100 yards, if not more than that. So, like... I certainly had him in a, a parlay that I put out there getting 80, 81 plus yards. You know, had over 81 yards. And uh, 25 didn't quite get me there. Not quite. Um... I did notice yep. something about Travis Kelsey today. Um, you traded Ke Travis Kelsey to Sola for Dalton Schultz and Michael Gallup. I think who you, yeah. you sent someone so, else with Kelsey too, but I, I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find it right now. Um, so I think it was this like Donovan Peoples Jones or something. 
was at the yeah this was at the beginning of my plan to rebuild with potential and not with young potential but with players that i thought had a lot of just huge upside and so uh -huh. um dalton schultz really showed up well last year uh, travis kelsey's value was through the roof and he's already in his 30s and so and michael gallup you know was out with the acl and so my thought was man if i could get two quality starters in place of one aging superstar then that was the way to go so that was the initial trade then you know after that i made probably the most lopsided trade of all time trading away russell wilson for davis mills and dj dallas uh that may have been bourbon fueled um but at least it's not killing me now because russ may be the worst quarterback in the league right now so yeah don't have to tell me that I'm well aware. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. I don't even know where I left off in this little thing. Oh, there it is. Despite a disappointing performance, let's continue talking about this game. Uh, you know what? I'm going to scratch the rest of that. Let's just get into the quotes here. <laughs> we have a quote from Trev. Uh, <laughs> Solo doesn't have a quote. Um, he was too busy uh, working on a trade um, with me. Uh, Trev's quote, it felt good to finally get a solid performance from our running back room. They've been struggling, uh, but of course, when our running backs play well, majority of our, uh, a majority of our wide receivers lay an egg. We are fortunate to be above 500 at the moment uh, as we are still waiting for the game when our guys are able to put it all together. When that day comes where we, where we are able to put it all together, I think we can compete with anyone in the league. Until that day, we will continue to do everything we can to grind out victories. Um, I don't want to talk about Trev anymore. Let's move on. I, I, I just want to point out one thing. It is good to see that Austin Eckler has come back to being an athlete after pretending like he was, I don't know, a rodeo clown or something the first three weeks. He's actually putting up points the last two weeks. So um, that's exciting to see uh, just because he is a cornerstone of the league. Um, there, were, there were a few times where Trev offered me Eckler um, granted, none of them were that favorable. Uh, like I, even now, I don't think I would accept them. Maybe, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at them all. Um, but like part of me is like, oh man, I should have, I should have done it. Cause he's probably going to have a great year now. And it's, it's, he's also 27 years old though. And that is you true. look at running back longevity. How many years do you have left? I mean, I just traded for a 28 year old running back and a 33 year old tight end. So <laughs> I noticed that I wasn't going to say anything about it, but I noticed that we'll get to that trade here in a little bit. We will. All right. Next game, just Jalen taking on trailing park girls. Um, the new team that we just added this week, trailing park girls um, you may have noticed that they were not at all in the video last week. Um, Trailing Park Girls, though, even being the new team, um, wins against Just Jalen. Not surprising um, because Just Jalen is, well, Just Jalen. Uh, another dominating performance for Trailing Park Girls. They have continued to dominate people in this league. They were able to put up 150 points with six players scoring less than seven points on the week. Did not realize that. Uh, the four man crew of Josh Allen, Nick Chubb, Gavin <laughs> Cook, and the Cowboys defense carried them with nearly 125 of the team's 150 points. Wow. That's incredible. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, uh, the good As a Cowboys fan, I got to say, I'm <laughs> just going to say, Cowboys defense, stupid. They look incredible. And I do definitely have money on Michael Parson, Micah Parsons being the defensive player of the year this year. So. Ooh. That's not a bad bet. That is not a bad bet to have. Uh, good news for just Jalen is that number one pick Brees Hall was able to showcase um, their potential in what was his best game of the season. Brees and Hurts were the only bright spots on the week um, besides his kicker, his kicker scoring 18. 
Uh, I guess that's a bright spot. Uh, just generally continue to trust the process as the rookies continue to adjust to the life in the NFL. Both teams were able to provide a comment this week. Um, which one do you want first, Stephen? Levi or Seth? I want to hear what Seth had to say. All right. Seth had this to say, just Jalen has a very bright future. Uh, they looked great this week. I said to him what Tom Osborne said to Nick Saban. Don't feel bad. We just have a really good team this year. Uh, this next week, I'm going to miss a very good fill the thrill. Uh, the battle for first place. In the battle of first place, fill the thrill had a great offseason, and it shows I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, I may be biased, but I hope fill the thrill kick some ass. I'll support that. <laughs> and Levi's quote, uh, Seth's team sucks. Make me spit my beer. <laughs> I'll support and that as that, well, Levi. And, and that's it. That's his entire quote. Uh, <laughs> moving on, we have Bad Mother Tucker uh, facing Phil the Thrill. Phil the Thrill continues to be unbeaten uh, in the battle of the Eric's Eric Smith was able to display not only name dominance, but fantasy football dominance as this one wasn't close from the jump. Eric Smith and Phil the thrill are, were able to keep things rolling as they are five and O oh to start the season for the other Eric, um, the hopes and dreams of this team providing any competition left the moment Dalvin cook was shipped off this last week. Uh, it's going to be tough to see bad mother Tucker be so bad. Uh, but this is the challenge faced with a rebuild. And um, Eric Lanier is keeping with his, his team's motto of fuck off and not providing comments. And Eric Smith. I got to say, <laughs> on Thursday night, on, on Thursday night, when I saw that Eric Smith had rostered Philip Lindsay, um for that thursday night game i really hope that that would be his downfall i, I really hope that that was going to be the thing <laughs> that his pride in his team name and his fourth string running back was going to be the thing that uh shot him in the foot and put him on the losing side for the first time this year he didn't have to worry about it though uh, it is very funny that you say that because eric smith's quote this week uh, Philip Lindsay carried. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. That's about all he did. Yep. <laughs> um, I, part of me being a Broncos fan, wanted Philip Lindsay to have like 200 yards, four touchdowns, just because. Because the Broncos did him dirty, like, but it did not happen. Uh, next game up. Hey, you've always been a guy who cheers for the outcast. I mean, you're, you're, you've always been a guy who cheers for the outcast. Who's your, who's your favorite NBA player of all time? All time? Well, I guess recent. All time is Shaq. Recent is Steven Adams. My point exactly, <laughs> Stephen. You are a Stephen Adams fan. I think you're like one of seven in the world who like reps the Stephen Adams jersey. No wonder you all, love. He Philip has Murphy. like twelve siblings, so I have to be one of at least thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> also, he he wrote a book. Stephen Adams wrote a book. I found it at Dollar Tree. It is amazing. It's so good. I rest my case. Um, which. <laughs> I'm shocked. Taking your literary Tree. picks from Dollar Tree, man. That's nothing to brag about. <laughs> I only bought it because I because I had wanted to read it because I was like, oh, Stephen Adams wrote a book. I want to read it. And I just okay. happened to see it. And so I was like, oh, I have to buy That's it. That's fair. But then I was like, is it that bad that Dollar Tree is selling it now? Like, so I went on Amazon, like looked at reviews and had a really good reviews and on amazon it's going for like 15 dollars. so i don't know how dollar tree hey, got its hands on them. it but it's a good book um 
it's phenomenal. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to I guess, Mandela Time. Weekly I guess recap. all of his siblings didn't Adam's want their story. copies. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There, there we go. Uh, all right. Skull purple, purple right. nurples. I mess that up every single time. Uh, face and Titan Factory reincarnated. Um, this one, game of the week, I would say. Uh, definitely closest game. Uh, and what turned out to be game of the week, tight end factory reincarnated was able to mount a Monday night comeback victory on the back of Derek Carr. Uh, they come from behind. Oh, we about to say something. They said no one ever that Derek no. Carr carried them to victory. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a, that's a bizarre, a bizarre <laughs> sentence I've never heard before. That is a very interesting sentence. Yes. Um, yeah. It is. Uh, the come from behind victory gives life to a team that has been banged up by injuries. Mark Andrews continues to be the backbone of this team. On the other side of the ball, the nightmare start of the season for Skull Purple Nurples continues as they fall to one in five. Uh, let's take a deep dive into the struggles and unfortunate of Skull Purple Nurples. Apparently, Trevor wrote this one. Um, at one and five, they're in ninth place in the league. They currently rank second in total points scored, second in the max total of possible points, and first by a lot <laughs> in uh, points allowed. Oh, um, yeah. the unfortunate part of being a great team is receiving every other team's best effort, and that is the case for Skull Purple, Purple Nurples this season. It has been a nightmare for them. I mean, I just want to say that uh, I had the pleasure of being demolished by them last week. Um, <laughs> the one week where everything fell into place and they scored 487 points in one week <laughs> happened to be at, uh, you know, against me. So it all worked for them last week. I don't know why it's not yeah. working every other week. <laughs> you got you to gotta get a better defense, man. That's what it is. Defense. Uh, just <laughs> telling me uh <laughs> our next matchup team barrett peanut facing friday night splash uh team barrett peanut getting the win 111 to 74 uh they were they were able to avoid getting screwed over by the london game uh, as they were able to field a full lineup and walk all over their opponent in this one uh, the trade to acquire Tom Brady is already paying off as this was the highest quarterback score that Team Barapina has posted this season. Led by their stars Alvin Kamara and Stephon Diggs, this was a pretty solid performance for this group through five weeks. Though Friday Night Splash has now doubled the amount of losses that they had all of last season, falling to one and four. That means Austin's one and four. I said one and five, didn't I? Yeah. I yeah, one you and did. Four. It's okay. Um, just realized that. Uh, following one and four on a season, uh, a team that many consider to be one of the favorites in the league has continued to struggle as they have yet to score more than 95 points in a game this season. Uh, the big names are there. They just continue to underproduce. And it is shocking. He's got a good lineup. Like, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of positive players there, but, you know, you get – uh, a zero from from Conklin and uh you know Dobbins is split and carries with Gus Edwards uh who Edwards has been showing up and looking good um but and for me I, I know that if my kicker doesn't put up 18 or 20 I don't have a chance and his kicker only put up three so that's gotta hurt um so yeah yeah he missed on a couple on a couple there but uh, if you look down at his bench, I, I sent him a message this week and just asked, did your entire roster get hit by a train? Because I think he had eight players who were listed as out this yeah, week, um, like before any buys or anything like that. So uh, he's, a, he's in a rough spot. Yeah, and it is. It's more sort of like his running back room of Joe Mixon, Dobbins, Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, like that – just hearing that, you should be like, okay, well, this team is has to be the, one of the top teams in the league with a running back room like that. Should be producing. Should be producing. But they are sure. just underwhelming a lot so far. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, boy. 
And uh, lastly, let's get to the, the, the matchup everyone's been waiting for. Setting on TDs, yeah. facing, kissing cousins. Um, I'll, I'll let, read the let, thing that Trev wrote. <laughs> good. Thank, I'm glad his voice can be heard in this discussion <laughs> between the two of us who are actually involved. <laughs> I just like to read it. I haven't read it yet. Have you even read it? Well, I'll tell you what he's going to say. He's going to talk about how awful my team is. So I'll just I'll throw that out there first. I don't I think uh, it does. Go for it. We'll, we'll hear it. In a battle of beloved friends who also want nothing more than to kick each other's asses, <laughs> Sutton on TDs was able to come out on top of the victory with only two players in double digits. Kissing Cousins was not able to overcome the balanced attack from Sutton on TDs. Big games from Josh Jacobs, Cooper Cup, Saquon, and Patrick Mahomes will be tough for anyone to overcome. Kissing Cousins was finally able to get the big game from Gabe Davis that they have been waiting for. Which that is true. Gabe Davis had a hell of a game. He did. Um, I'll tell you, that happened. You know, he puts up those two huge catches. I think he had 35 points in the first half of that game on three catches, on three receptions. Um, which is hilarious when we go back to looking what Kelsey did on four touchdowns and seven receptions, only 26 <laughs> points. Uh, um, but that happened and I thought, oh shit, I might actually have a chance this week. And then, uh, cousins went into overtime and was able to add the points to, you know, have a good game. And I was like, man, this looks good. What I need to happen the, the thing that would make this work with you having Mahomes and Josh Jacobs uh, is if the Chiefs got out to an early lead and then ran the ball and the Raiders had to throw the ball. Because um, yeah. I have, I've got CEH and then the Chiefs defense. And so I was thinking, man, that's a pretty common, like that's what, well, that's what should happen, right? But no, freaking the Raiders go out to a 17 point lead and Josh Jacobs became a god, and yeah, I everything fell apart. So it looked for a second like I had some hope, like there was a glimmer. And I'm just going to go ahead and say now that I have no hope left at this point, and I don't expect oh, wow. to have hope again this season. Um, so I'm just going to enjoy what I can enjoy, like changing my team name regularly or – uh, picking up funny players. I don't know. That's about what I have to offer at this point. Yeah. Um, I will not, I was scared for a while. Um, <laughs> I was like, I, I cannot lose this game. Like I need to win. Um, and then like the game that you game. should win. Yeah. It's a game yes. you should have won. You shouldn't. So yeah, it would be scary to yeah. have even that threat there. Uh, and then, you know, like defense is getting 20 to start the game. Like, you know, yeah. you're like, okay, going into it, I think I was down like 12 going into that game. And then as soon as the game starts, all of a sudden I'm down 32. And I kind of forget for right. a moment that that happens. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did this escalate so fast? <laughs> yeah, I um, – I also had Garrett Wilson go out of the game with an injury. Rashad Penny broke his freaking leg. Um, Dalton Schultz went out with an injury in the first quarter, never came back. Um, so, like, I mean, it's just a comedy of errors at this point yeah. with injuries on my team. Um, I don't have any IR spots left because all of my running backs are on IR. I'm going to have to hold IR players on my bench at this point because I just – don't have any running backs left. Um, so look forward to whoever plays me next um, that, you know, you're going to see Donta Foreman and a Brandon Bolden in my backfield before long, because that's about where I am at this point. I may, I may even just go ahead and roster uh, Ronald Jones at some point, even though he has not put on his uniform in four months. Um, I think I might actually just have to put him in the starting lineup in hopes of getting something out of a ring. It's funny you bring up Ronald Jones. Isn't that shocking? Like, as soon as he signed with Kansas City, everyone, everybody, 
I don't know anyone that was like, oh, he's not going to play. Like, everyone thought this is a great one-two punch, Clyde and Ronald Jones. Right. Um, I think the first sign of that falling apart, and I, I'm sure there's a story behind the scenes of him not being physically ready or a oh, lingering yeah. injury or him being just an absolute asshole or something. There's something there. But as soon as they re-signed Jarek McKinnon, a th- what is he, 31 years old or something like that, um, on top oh, of Ronald yeah. Jones after they had already drafted Pacheco, I was like, there's something very, very wrong here for them to go ahead and spend more money to bring back McKinnon. Um, because we all know what CEH is. Like, there's there's no confusion about what he is. Yeah. Um, he is, he's a, uh, he's a set play guy, you know? Yeah. Um, he's the guy that takes the free kicks for a soccer team. Like he, he does some things really well. They use him in fancy little situations and it turns into points, uh, most weeks, but he's not an every down back. And yeah. so it really made sense for Ronald Jones to be that guy, but he hasn't been active yet this season. That is wild. Um, did you have a, did you have a statement or did you already say your statement? Um, I mean, my, my statement, statement? um, (laughs) yeah, yeah. My official statement is, uh, Seth sucks. That's it. Yeah. You know what? I'm a, I'm a steal that official statement. That's going to be my official statement too. (laughs) Seth sucks. (laughs) Why not? Let's, I'm going to copy and paste that every week from now on. Let's show some camaraderie, you know, in our official statement. Uh, Absolutely. I like (laughs) it. I'm glad we can come together on that. (laughs) Uh, We do have some league news. Some more trades happened this week um, as recently as a few hours ago. Um, Mm -hmm. We have three of them. The first one, uh, Modelo's Most Wanted receives the Eagles defense uh, and then Bad Mother Tucker receives the Panthers defense, a 2023 fourth, a 2025 third, and a 2025 second. Um, so that's a rebuild move there for Bad Mother Tucker, for sure. Um, what was Absolutely. really funny is Modelo's most wanted trades for the Eagles defense and then doesn't even play them because their matchup was awful. I know you don't trade him for like one week, but it's just funny. Um, right, right. And then the second trade, also including Bad Mother Tucker, uh, he receives a 2024 second, and then Sutton on TDs receives Odell Beckham Jr. Um, I felt it was worth the risk for me. I have a pretty solid team. And I have yeah. a ton of firsts in 2024, so a second's not that valuable to me. Is Odo is? I'm sorry if this is just a ridiculous question. Is Odo Beckham Jr. still alive? I was, he is. He is. He is. Um, okay. I imagine he signs it with the team. I would say in the next couple of weeks, probably before the end of October. Yeah. Okay. Um. It'd be great if it was like the Packers. That would be the best case scenario for me. Uh. Or the worst case scenario for me. Since I have three Packers receivers on my squad. Yeah, that would be, that would not be a great thing for you. (laughs) Yeah, somehow, Uh, I I don't know why I did this. Um, Well, I do know why I did this. I've really targeted specific groups of players um started with the Seattle backfield when for some reason I did not realize Chris Carson was on his deathbed and picked him off of the roster of who was it Corey or whoever um and I was like well I gotta have his backup so then I got Penny and then all the talk was yeah Penny's falling apart at you know every hinge of his body and so then I get DJ Dallas and now then I had to get KW3 in the draft because I had to back up those other investments. And I've done the same thing with the Green Bay uh, receiver core, apparently. But I may have picked all of the wrong receivers is what it's looking like now. So 
So Super. far, there hasn't been a great receiver in Green Bay anyway. Like that's true. Lazard has actually showed up like numbers wise. He's the most steady. Like you, have you look Lazard? at uh I do. I do. Okay. Yeah, he's been the most steady, but he hasn't had really a big week yet. Um, you know, it's between seven and twelve points a week. Um, but he's also he's getting more targets as the weeks go on. And yeah. so I'm I'm hopeful that that's going to pick up here pretty soon. He was injured to start the year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he missed week number one. Um, but it, there's a lot of opportunity for him there, especially being the guy there that I think uh, Aaron knows the best. Um, outside, so of Randall hopefully Cobb, that yeah. familiarity turns right outside of his pocket elf, Randall Cobb. Um, I think uh, I'm hoping that turns into numbers as we go on because Lazard's an actual athlete. You know, he's a, he's a big dude, uh, catches, he's got great hands, gets above everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't care about the Packers. So, um, yeah. And I no longer have Aaron Jones. So I don't, I don't care what they do. They can you write them off forever. They there can you go. do whatever they want. Um, That's right. Speak, speaking of Aaron Jones, leads us into the next trade. Um, trade that happened today. Um, Sutton on TDs receives Travis Kelsey, Derrick Henry, and a 2024 first, uh, which put me at six first in that draft, which is more than Levi has this year. Let's go. That was, that was my goal. Uh, <laughs> insane <laughs> and worse to slightly better gets Aaron Jones, George Kittle, Christian Kirk, and Josh Jacobs. Um, it was tough for me to give up two running backs, but with six firsts now, um, a huge positional advantage in Travis Kelsey, and you know, obviously getting yeah. the Yeti Derrick Henry. Um, it was worth it, in my opinion. I, you, you're in a really unique position having the draft capital you do in 24, but also having a very competitive team this year. Um, I am, I am hoping for some kind of midair collision between the airplanes of several teams that you have key players on. So you can feel what I'm feeling right now, which is not being able to fill out a roster with players who actually play. I think you're getting close. The more numbers you trade away, you know, if you just, if you lose four or five players to death, then I think it's possible. I mean, I really hope I don't lose anybody to death. I hope nobody loses anyone <laughs> to death. Goodness. Um, wow. I'm just saying that's the only hope. That's the only way that you feel what I feel right now. I never want to feel what you feel right now. There's a, it, I mean, <laughs> it could happen. I mean, you know, like Derek Henry falls off fast. Travis Kelsey falls off fast. Saquon gets hurt again. Not probably yeah. not this year. It's probably not going to happen, but like it could very well happen next year. The only sure. thing that makes it different is that I'm sitting looking at six first round picks to replace those guys. And I will be just hovering over the waiver wire, <laughs> waiting on all the <laughs> players you drop. So um, I don't know. I. I do not expect to carry those six picks. Definitely not into the offseason. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, I mean, well, I. Well, let's talk about it right now, then. Let's talk about right now what you need for one of those 24 first round picks. Well, I mean. <laughs> It kind of depends, you know. I have a you bad. Said you I didn't want to give have, up two running backs. Yeah, but I, I, had I have a desire to start Ronald Jones, which means I need to move a running back. So, um, I mean, what do you need? Like, let's let's get this moving right now. Let's get something done. All right. Well, looking at your team. Yeah. There are three 
three running backs that I'd be interested in. Let me pull up your team. Yeah. Now. Um, and be and yes, folks, this is happening live. Well, well, you've got the number eight running back in CEH. He's available, and he is the number eight overall running back. He so, is. That's an option. But then it's it's like. That's tough because I already have two of my main players are already Chiefs, and I hate the Chiefs. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be him, Kenneth Walker, who I doubt you want to give up, like a, a young running back, uh, and then Tony Pollard. Right. And you're right. Kenneth Walker is a guy that I would really not like to part with. Um, so really we're looking but at that doesn't mean guys. he can't be bought. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Kenneth Walker off the table for myself. Cause I think I'm going to have to pay more than what I want to pay for him for sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at Clyde. Looking at Pollard. I mean, I could just take both of them off your hands for you. Three firsts and it's done. Whoa! Three firsts? Hey, you said what you want. I said what I want. And and this is what this is what gets lost so often is that this is how negotiation works. <laughs> you say something ridiculous, like I'm gonna take two of your three able-bodied running backs. And then I say something that is equally ridiculous from my side, which is I want three first round picks. And then we figure out how to find a spot in the middle. You're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, no, I probably will not try to get both of them. Um, Cause like, I, I still, I do have Melvin Gordon still. So like I, I have three starting running backs at least. Do I really want to have – like I had to start Melvin Gordon this week because Derrick Henry's on a bye, and I hate it because I right. can't stand Melvin Gordon. Well, you can – you know he's going to lose at least four points on fumbles, so that's a deficit. You're starting at negative four already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I'm okay. I'm facing Eric Lanier this year who is in the middle of a rebuild and is traded – away most of his key players so i feel confident yeah. even starting melvin gordon um but so let's see i don't know gosh i think i would look at pollard before clyde and he's a guy that i've never really talk to anybody about because if he does not end up with the majority of the carries this year, he will be the starting running back somewhere next year. Um, If Dallas does not re-sign Zeke, he's going to be the starting running back in Dallas. If not, somebody's going to pay him as a big time free. He's a free agent after this year. Yeah. So he has the value that I want to sit on for next year, which is why I haven't traded him. And Oh, by the way, he's also number 21 running back on top of that. So and higher than Zeke. Actually. The value there is it's really high. <laughs> yes. The value yeah. there is really, really high. Um, I don't first of all, I don't know why the Cowboys continue to play Zeke over Pollard. Pollard has been bad. They both have their place. Pollard doesn't run up the middle. Zeke Zeke will get four point two every time up the middle. Like yeah. you know, it's it's a bait and switch deal. And Zeke is a great blocker as well. I guess that's true. Um, and they're paying him $40 million a year or whatever. So you're that's, that's, yep. That's also a key point. Uh, you don't normally pay that much to have him stay on the sideline. I think it's 20 so, paying him 25 or something like that, but it's, it's a ridiculous much. amount. It's a, yeah. I lean back yeah. in my chair and now I'm just like, just my head is showing and I feel weird about it. 
So just like just my head. Um, okay. Hey, our viewers so, are going to get bored really quickly if we don't if, if we continue to waffle on this thing and don't move on to other stuff. So just letting you know. I don't care about our viewers. <laughs> I know who our viewers are. They can sit and watch this for all I care. All right. <laughs> Pollard. What would it, what, obviously like you're wanting to rebuild. Yeah. Of course. Um, but like I said, Pollard could be a key cog in my rebuild next year because he will be a starter somewhere next year. So for me to give him up is not, like it's going to take a price that makes sense. Okay. Well, what's that price? Um, I need a 24 first. And your 25 fourth. Which 24 first? Uh, I mean, it's either going to be Levi or Sola. Or Corey. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a top five. And again, I totally, I understand that if you look at just straight across value, like in a normal draft pick league of this year, that that's a high price to pay, but we're not paying for just this year, right? Like You're right. that's the beauty yeah. of dynasty is that the way I value a player is based on a lot more than just today and just this season. Oh yeah. I would, I would do, I would feel more comfortable trading CEH and I do that for, um, I do that for probably, let's see, Solo will be the best out of those, uh, or yeah, Solo is going to be closer to the middle of the pack. So for Solo is first, 24. So Solus first for Clyde, just straight up, those two? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to think on it. I'm going to have to think on it. Okay. Let's move on to our questions. Well, while we're talking about – okay, just a second. I need to address something from last yes. week's podcast. <laughs> um. Uh, I need it's to not a podcast. <laughs> talk just a little bit. <laughs> Hell yes, it is at this point. This is a podcast. This is a freaking podcast. Um, just the accusations made by Levi on the terrible trade offers that I've made. I just I want to make it very clear. My offer of Chris Carson for his first overall pick in the draft. That offer was made like four seconds after we signed up for the sleeper league and I figured out how to use the trade option. It was just fucking around. Like it was literally day one, just, oh, let me send out a ridiculous trade. That okay. was that. I obviously knew that wasn't a thing. Number two, Gabe Davis for a first. Yes, that was on the back of the Super Bowl hype. I sent that trade out on Super Bowl Sunday after the game was over. And I think I sent something like that to more than one person um, just because I was like, hey, maybe somebody is like, oh, hell, this is the guy to, to build on. Yeah, so you might get someone to buy. I it. totally understood. Totally understand that they seem bizarrely ridiculous. But the first one was a total joke. The Gabe Davis one. Uh, yeah, just trying to get somebody to bite. All right. That's all. All right. All right. And I'm, a, I'm well, a lonely middle-aged man who has no excitement in my life. So I do a lot of ridiculous things like that. Well, I hope you're ready All to right, answer on to our questions question because that's a question that will be a recurring <laughs> question. Because it's fun. All you right. Know? Like, because we all send terrible Perfect. trades. Have a All right. Of course. First question. 
How do you think your team has performed thus far? Surprises, disappointments, what you got? Yeah. Um, the fact that I've only had one week where I've scored less than 90 points, uh, it really kind of surprises me. You know, I've been able to put yeah. together a team that averages about 95 points a week, um, which is very actually competitive. So um, overall, my strategy of building a team around, um, you know, just value, kind of the money ball style of building a team versus just biggest names and biggest scores. Um, I was hoping that that would pay off and it, it worked pretty well so far. It's just my matchups have not panned out for that. Um, yeah, Cordero Patterson is not somebody I planned to rely on, but I ended up needing to rely on him. And now he's out yeah. for the long run, as is Richard Penny. Um, and so that's painful. Um, overall, I think my team is about, uh, if I hadn't lost all my running backs, um, I think my team is just about to start hitting in high gear with Gallup coming back. Um, once Dak Prescott, Dak, Dak Prescott comes back, he and Gallup are just super tight. And uh, I think he's going to score huge points. Um, Gabe Davis is starting to really pop off. Al Nazard is growing, growing, growing every week. I think the receivers I put together um, are really going to improve. So, um, yeah, like my theory looked really good. Injuries have just really derailed it. So uh, disappointed, but uh, have a little bit of, you know, hope in mm -hmm. in the way that I planned that out and was able to build it. Good. Very good. All right. Next question. Uh, who do you think – outside of your team, like you can't choose your team for this. Yeah. Who has the most underrated roster in Modelo time? Yeah, uh, it's definitely Aussie. Um, now I looked at, you gave me that question and I automatically threw out the top four or five teams because you're not underrated if you're winning every yeah. week. Yeah. So not usually. <laughs> um, so looking basically at the bottom five, six teams, um, Austin by far, I think has the most, you know, he's just not getting the payout for what his team is. Yeah. His wide receiver room is just insanely good. Um, but he also has very little developmental talent. So um, this year he looks great. Uh, I'm hoping that that will pay off for him in some more wins because he definitely deserves it. Yeah, for sure. I, he he was a team that I thought was going to be like one of the top teams all season yeah. long. I mean, I still think he is one of the top teams just record wise. It's not showing. Um, right. All right. Uh, you get to choose one player on your team, on your team to be stranded on a deserted Island with who do you pick? This is a tough one. Um, Mostly because none of my players have personalities. Uh, they're all just like second, third <laughs> string guys. So, so I wasn't really excited about any of them. Um, but I started to think about their situational relation. And like, I think Alan Lazard would probably have some insane stories about Aaron Rodgers. Like th he's been with him for four or five seasons now. That could be really entertaining. And then similarly, Davis Mills because of just having gone through the Deshaun Watson situation. Sorry to say that name out loud. Uh, but having been through that situation, um, I think he could be a really entertaining person to like just hear fly on the wall stories, you know? Definitely not two names I would have thought you were going to say. So I don't know who I thought you would say, but... <laughs> Well, I'm just thinking about were... <laughs> if you're on a desert island, you either want somebody who can provide something for you or somebody who can entertain you. And sure. man, I think both of those guys could have a lot of stories. So you no no Kirk Cousins. You like that stories? Nothing. You don't want those? I think Kirk Cousins <laughs> is like dude, he, he reminds me of every Mormon kid that I ever went to high school with <laughs> or homeschool kid. Like he's just this really straight laced, clean cut guy. I don't think we would jive. 
Yeah, probably not. You, you really probably <laughs> should not. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, start one, bench one, cut one. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Okay, I need some clarification here. Is this for a team that I'm managing, a team that I'm on, a team I'm a fan of? Like, what is this? Does the Do your answers change based on that? Hell yes. Hell yeah. Let's go a team you're a fan of. Team I'm a fan of, it's going to be start Mahomes, um, bench Lamar, cut Allen. Wow. As a fan, and, and here's why. As a fan, I want a player that I like as a person and personality, not just their athletic ability. And Mahomes talks, and he's fun, and he's a crazy athlete. I'd love to watch that. And then Lamar, I mean, he's just insane to watch, so I can't, cut, can't get rid of him completely. Now, if it's my fantasy team, it's Josh Allen immediately. Oh, yeah. Um, if, it's, if it's a team I'm playing on, even, then it's Josh Allen over the other two. So it... It, it just depends on what what direction I'm looking at it from. I. How about you? I have no idea. This isn't about me. Next question. <laughs> um, man. Oh gosh. I don't know. I uh, I'm cutting Patrick Mahomes. That's all I know. That's, that's the Broncos. Yeah, that's the Bronco fan in me, though. That's all that is. Uh, I'd probably, I mean, probably start in Josh Allen. Dude's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all ridiculous in their own way, but I think the thing that though. sets Allen and Mahomes, uh, Allen and Mahomes have the arm talent that Lamar doesn't. And then Lamar and Josh both run the ball better than Pat does. So like yeah it's kind of a it's 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 a toss-up in a lot of different areas that's why it yeah. to me it's like it depends on what direction i'm coming at it from that's fair that's fair all right the question everyone has been waiting for because it's the best question what is the worst trade offer you received in modelo time you sure you want to get the answer yeah I don't care if it's me. I've sent so many bad trades. I know I okay, have. Okay, so <laughs> I've made, I've made, uh, I've, I went through all of my trade, like official trade proposals through Sleeper. Um, and I don't have the old app, so I can't go back through all those. Um, but I went through all the ones that I have record of. And two things really stuck out. One was your offer of Christian Kirk for my 2024 first round pick. Like I've never valued Christian Kirk. I cut him last season as a dud. You never know. And you never know. So, so that, <laughs> that was one that jumped out at me, but the, and this other one isn't officially like a, like one time trade offer, but in a matter of like two and a half months, Trev, proposed eight trades to me trying to deal Cordero Patterson off on me. Eight different trade offers in like a two and a half month span. So that one's one like, no, it's not just one trade offer, but it's like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> and yes, finally, I finally, uh, he brought it down low enough to where I bid on it. But um, yeah, those are the two that really, that I had record of that stuck out. That's fair. Hey, I was hoping someone would buy Christian Kirk, going to be the number one guy in Jacksonville. I was like, hey, so, hey you never know. You never know. I said that's that to like a being lot. the number one guy at Ball everybody. State. <laughs> that's like being the number one guy at Ball State or something. Hey, it's just like Christian Kirk's matter. the wide receiver nine right now. Just saying. Fine, fine. I'm not going to invest in him. But it doesn't matter because he's not on my team anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Attaboy. So way to deal those Christian words. Kirk, get him out of here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, 
I'm I'm actually glad that I am the worst trade offer. Because if I went through this whole thing and I get everybody on here and I'm never the worst, <laughs> I'm gonna feel really bad about it. Because then it seems like I know I'm trying to prove that like, I know like I'm trying to be better than people, but I'm not. Right. I know there are some much worse ones when we, I don't remember what the name of our old app was, but there was a lot more history back then. And yeah. the majority of my trade stuff happens over text anyway, not over the app. Yeah. So, Oh yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't get to do a real deep dive into all the information, but those are the two things I came up with that were there. So, yeah, that is fair. All right. That is everything that's everything i have all right price on c price on ceh just went up you gotta add a fifth in there as well so you're waiting too long i don't even know if i have a fifth round pick <laughs> <laughs> they're all first so i don't know what to do they're all they're all first i don't know <laughs> i i can't get <laughs> i'm about to look do i have a, i i really don't think i have a fifth round pick i might who I might send that trade over to you. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I do not. Oh, no, I do. In 2024, I do have one first yep. or one fifth round pick. Um, yeah. So first and fifth. That'll do it. I'll think about it. Come on. I'll, right you'll, you'll, you'll have your answer tonight. Okay. For sure. All right. All right. Uh, Sounds well, good. Thanks for coming on. Um, it was a pleasure. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Um, I need to go. I need to get another beer. So that's fair. It's good timing. I imagine you were probably done with it a while ago. But uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, all right. Well, uh, everyone that's watching this, um, suck a fat one. <laughs>